Hello, uh, it's Andy here from CNC Labs. Today we'll be covering October 2024 production update. Just a reminder, if you wanna get all the latest information, make sure to check out our blog. Um, we have the production update blog available on our website, which covers more details, links, pictures, videos, and all that sort of other stuff. Going ahead, uh, we have lots of updates for this month, so we'll just get right into it. First and foremost, um, we have continued to get parts for Altmill and we continue to ship them. I think we've got about 40, 50 ish more machines out the door. There are a couple of small notes to share. We were expecting to get spindles for the Altmill September 20th. However, because of uh, a strike happening on the rail for the port, we're expecting those to come in September 30th or so. Some of the machine shipments are on hold waiting for those uh, parts to arrive. But that shipment should have about 350 more kits. So anyone waiting for the spindles for the long mill kit, as well as the alt mill, those will all be there and we'll probably have a lot for some period of time. We have another batch coming sometime at the end of October as well, another three or 400-ish. Be stocked up on more spindles, so going forward, we'll have less shipping delays. I think the first sort of batch or so of machines typically, you know, we run into small things until we kind of iron um, supply chain issues out. In other news, we also did put out a notice for a really small subset of people. I think there was like 10 or 15 alt mills um, that needed new y-axis plates. I believe that everyone who Almost pretty much everyone who had that issue has been resolved now. And we've made updates to the design of the rail and the gantry to make sure that any future machines don't have that problem. We have another 80 gantries being shipped on the way here to kind of cover the gantries that we need to replace. And then we'll have another couple hundred uh, arrive in the next uh, month or so. We're also working on the assembly videos for the alt mill. Those are expected to come out pretty soon. We're just putting the final touches on that as well. So that'll, um, the resources for assembling the alt mill are all already available on our website. And we'll also have supplemental video content coming out for the assembly as well. Another big part of alt mill news, we have the documents, the CAD files available now through our Onshape link. Now they're open sourced, which means that if you're looking for the dimensions of the machine, specific parts that you might want to replace or reorder, or you want to make accessories or 3D print new dust shoes and things like that, check out the blog. We have a link there. We'll be posting that information on our resources and other parts of our website in the coming weeks. So, you know, keep an eye out for those things as well. Long mill shipping continues to move without any incidents. We now have the video assembly guide as well as the resources for how to install a spindle, the spin long mill spindle kit that we sell on our website onto your long mill. The spindle kits are expected to arrive September 30th. So anyone who's ordered them, um, hang on a little more, hang tight a little while longer, but we will have them shipping out in October and uh, moving forward any orders they will be shipping out from this batch as well. Big news for this past month, the Vortex, we now have uh, for full fourth axis support as well as uh, a new kit coming out for the closed loop stepper motor. Essentially what that means is that the motor for the fourth axis, the, the Vortex rotary axis, that will have a separate control from the SLB, which just allows you to move the rotary axis independently of the Y axis. Uh, before with the open loop option, which is the standard option that we've shipped to up to this point, those uh, you have to toggle between ro rotary mode and uh, regular mode. Now they're all in the same mode essentially. So um, you have four different sets of motors that control the movement of all these different parts. For the most part, there won't be much change to the way that people do the actual machining process. In the future, um, users, more advanced users, should be able to do more complicated uh, processes that involve full fourth axis motion. We'll have some more content and information coming out about that, but you can order either the closed loop stepper motor kit, which allows you to take your original Vortex and add the 
motor to it, or you can buy a full new Vortex rotary axis kit, which will have um, the new closed loop stepper motor. We do still also have the regular open loop uh, Vortex version that's for machines that don't have SLB. So any long wheel Mark 1s and long wheel Mark 2s, they will still use the same type. They aren't interchangeable, so make sure when you order, you're choosing the right option. The closed loop stepper motor kits and the closed loop stepper uh, vortexes, those are expected to ship pretty soon. We have the motors and a lot of the cables that are now here. We've also done a lot of testing so far and um, we'll be posting more content and videos on the new projects that we've done. The only thing that I believe we're waiting on is the power splitter cable. Because the closed loop stepper needs a separate source of power, um, it doesn't come from the control board itself, we have a cable that's separate so that you can power the motor with your existing power supply. So, yep, just uh, continue to work on the Vortex side of things. Laser beam updates, focus rings, the safety glasses are also all in stock now and shipping on a regular basis. We also have laser beams stocked up, so people who want laser beams, those will ship as soon as you order it. There are a couple of things that we are working on and finalizing. One is the magnetic mount for the laser beam, which will allow users to remove their laser without taking the screws off. So it'll still be a little bit faster. And um, you should be able to find new resources available for the laser beam. More content and more resources on the laser beam resources on our website. Ikana and Jen has told me that they're building a new laser testing area for additional uh, safety testing. So. We'll probably have some more information and content coming out about that uh, in the near future as well. A big update for the panel computers. As you guys know, we've been working on the panel computer project for the last few months. We now have the 50 on the way. Those are expected to arrive third week of October. We're working on a couple different things. One is the uh, programming and the software side of the computer. So essentially we're planning out what software we're going to load on it and some additional resources to do the networking for those computers. We also have the 50 Microsoft Windows 11 IoT licenses on the way as well, which will be pre-installed on all of the devices. We are also waiting on the mounts to finish so that uh, we'll have a specific way for those panel computers to be mounted to the long mill or the alt mill. We should be getting those any day now. And if you're interested in the panel computers, uh, check out our blog. There is a survey where you can let us know your email and we'll let you know when those are available. Once those 50 are sold out, we will plan out the large batch of the manufacturing. So the first 50 is kind of our test batch. Um, the computers are kind of expensive, but we're expecting the price point to be in the four to five hundred dollar range. Yeah, if they're really popular, people like them, then obviously we'll scale up that batch and we'll make sure to iron out any issues for the, the main batch as well. We have a lot of updates now for the Sprouter. Um, it turns out that someone else has named their product the Sprouter and that was about a year ago. So we will need to move away from calling our product the Sprouter. If you have any ideas or names that you think would be good for this product, feel free to let us know. The first part of the project is to build a Makita alternative. We now have samples on the way, or prototypes on the way that will allow users to connect their uh, control board with a 5 volt PWM output. So both the SLB, the long board, and the large majority of hobbyist CNC controllers will be able to control the speed. So in a way, it's like having a Makita router, except rather than having to use a dial to control the speed, we'll have a cable that will tell it what speed to go at. And obviously we are also making sure that the bearing quality and the quality of the overall product is higher than the Makita option. That's our progress so far with that. Um, so there's a bunch of pictures uh, if you want to check them out. We've also been working on the conceptual designs for the what the physical product is going to look like. We want to make sure that it's differentiable to the typical Palm router and also integrate all of those extra features that we were talking about. So if you have any ideas or thoughts about what the physical router should look like, such as like the color scheme or you know where things are located, feel free to let us know as well. We also have the um, some progress with the uh, brushless DC version of this. Uh, we are expecting to get the 
mounts for the bearings pretty soon. Um, the last batch, we had some manufacturing issues that caused the bearings to wear out too fast or caused like uh, heating issues. The new, new um, seats are higher tolerance and so we expect that to solve some of the problems in terms of the bearing longevity. We also got a sample in for a uh, VESC based driver, which is uh, kind of like a firmware for brushless DC motors. The, we're able to get to about 100 volts of uh, power to the motor, but um, we need to build a new custom version that can handle up to 200, which will allow us to use uh, wall voltage essentially to be able to power the brushless DC motor. The big question right now is if the, because the voltage is too low for the motor, we can't get it up to the speed that we wanted to, which is probably around 24 to 30,000 RPM. We're able to get it like around 10,000 RPM. So the question is, are we gonna be able to get to the, the speed level that we want at the higher voltage? And second, is the speed control consistency going to stay uh, good with that whole range of speeds? The new drivers are expected to finish probably in the month, next month or two and uh, we'll have more testing information available once that happens. Last thing I want to talk about, the, we will be in Austin, Texas, uh, October 11th and 12th for the Vector UGM meetup. We'll be bringing an alt mill and a couple other goodies for us to share. So if you're going to be there, let us know. We'll see you at the event. I believe that's pretty much everything that's on my list at the moment. If you want to learn more, subscribe to our newsletter and all that sort of stuff. Make sure to check out, check out our blog on the website. Otherwise, thanks for stopping by and we'll catch you next month.